Evolutionists are fond of declaring the mudskipper to be the creationist worst nightmare. They suggest that there are a number of species of fish that may qualify as a link between fish and amphibians. The mudskipper, the climbing perch, and the lungfish all feature characteristics that allow them to spend some time out of water. But can we make the logical leap to believe that all biochemical information from molecules to man passed through a genetic bridge spanning water to land? The fact that there are a few creatures that possess features that allows them to survive in both environments does not refute the creationist contention that they were created with these features in the first place. Evolutionists point out these species that exist today to be examples of an evolutionary transition that supposedly happened millions of unobserved and unknown and untestable years ago. Does the evolutionist expect then that the mudskipper will continue evolving into an even higher form of life? Even people, given enough time? After all, the origins evolution model does postulate that humans originally evolved from fish, which had become amphibians, which had become reptiles, which had become mammals, that had become primates, that became man. So where does the mudskipper fit into this equation? I suppose we are watching the evolution of an entirely new race of humans to be thrust upon the world millions of years into the future? Not likely. Perhaps such creatures as the mudskipper might give an evolutionist some comfort on some superficial level, but the argument that they are proof of evolution is as fallacious as lining up your electronic items on a table to prove that your computer evolved from a microwave oven. My objective here is to show that a creationist position is reasonable, and it's easy to believe given the scientific facts. There is nothing illogical about believing in a creator who built all animals differently but with similar master plans and similar building blocks. But evolutionists ask us to believe that the genetic information that codes for all land-dwelling living systems pass through a conduit such as the mudskipper, or somehow materialized much later through a million-year-old process. Living systems contain a three-dimensional computer-like code that tells, for example, your fingers to grow at a certain length and then stop. Your eyeballs do not grow, for example, to 10 inches in diameter, nor does your tongue grow to be three feet long. We observe that this marvelous construct of DNA, RNA, and proteins provide for tremendous variety within a species. But the construct is self-regulating, self-repairing, and copies itself with tremendous accuracy. There is no reason to believe that this amazing system was different and simpler in the beginning or that it came into being through a magical pool of mud over magical periods of time inundated with magical elements of magical energy magically producing a living thing that magically knows how exactly to reproduce itself perfectly. It is at this level that the logic and scientific argument for Darwinism fails. Creationists believe that all life on Earth started from various created kinds, and the diversity of life that we now observe was built within the genetic information that coded for the construction and replication of this life. Speciation takes place when various populations of these creatures are isolated, and through mutations or genetics or environmental trauma, some information is lost. Evolutionists have the impossible task of demonstrating to us that gain in information is probable and likely over millions of years and across multiplied millions of widely differing species of life. This information gain does not even take into account the fact that each of these species of life are made up of more millions and millions of subsystems and microscopic parts that all depend upon the other to function properly. The mathematical improbabilities of these factors happening through a magic mud pool are staggering. So the mudskipper, rather than being the creationist's worst nightmare, as many evolutionists are fond of saying, it turns out that this amazing creature, when examined through pure logic and a true scientific information paradigm, becomes one more example of the evolutionist's worst nightmare. Imagine that.